Yes, yes, yes. Robert L. Dean, I'm telling you, man, I am is so ecstatic, so ecstatic to where we're at today yes. because um, when I tell you that one of my favorite anointed men of God that uh, is with us on the day, I mean, I, I have been waiting for this moment, uh, and I called you last night. You said you couldn't even sleep. Um, I'm not going to lie. My stomach is in knots. Um since 1987, uh -huh. while attending Grambling State University, yes, yes. homesick, never been away from home, uh -huh. the song I Worship Thee got me through my first semester being thousands of miles wow. from San Diego, California, and Louisiana. Uh -huh. I, there were times that I would cry at night because I would say, man, I miss my mama. Uh -huh. I miss my daddy. And I would turn this album called Yes, Lord on, uh -huh. and it seemed like my troubles would just kind of subside, and I was able to make it through that semester being away from my family. Well, you know, one of the things about this next artist that we in, uh, are going to interview is um, he's one of those people that, you know, we love because of his great heart. Um, we love him because of his great music. Mm -hmm. But more than anything else, it's almost like everybody who meets him want to call him uncle uh, because he is just that loving when you meet him. I, I think what sets him apart and I think what makes him for now is that how he embraces the up and coming. It's, it's very rare. You'll have your Dr. Bobby Joneses, you'll have your James Cleveland's and your Dr. Maddie Moss Clarks. Mm -hmm. But in this generation, it's hard to find people who give so much to help other people up that are less known. So who do we have with us, with us today? This is one of my favorite singers, him and Marvin Winans. And um, I mean, I'm telling my stomach is in knots. Uh -huh. Remember I told you I couldn't sleep last night. And I'm normally professional, yeah, I, I got so, I'm, so I'm gonna try to bring it down. Bring it, trying to bring it down. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, our listeners and viewers, we have the prince of gospel music, the the man who has been been just everything to all of us for years. He uh -huh. he is he is the signature of gospel music at yeah. its finest. Amen. None other than Doctor John yeah. Pastor yes. John Prince Key. How yeah. you doing, brother? Good morning. How you doing, sir? Great. I'm doing amazing. Thank y'all for all of that. Hey, it's just a blessing to be hanging out with you. Well, you, you know, this, this has been <laughs> a long time coming. You know, you know, I, I almost feel like there, cause there's a conspiracy for us to get together because, you know, everybody, and I, and I kid you not, the fair, yes. we had the fair on point yes. this year. Uh, we had already sold out all the tickets for... Uh, all the reserve seats. Yep. Everybody's like, John P. Key coming. Yes. He, gonna, he bringing the whole kit and caboodle. Right. And, and we were, uh, everybody was just like, on cloud nine, the fairgrounds was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. We ain't seen this in a long time. Right. And it, it was like, okay, uh, uh, Lord, um, you know, whatever's going on, there, we know that there's an anointing that is coming with you, and we're in expectation. I was super excited for a lot of reasons. First of all, Dago has been family to me for years. Yes. And y'all know who I is. I mean, even when we would come out yes. 20 years ago, I mean, we were always loved them. But what we did specifically for this tour is everybody, when they found out we were going to be there, they start trying to book us in Los Angeles. And then we, we agreed to not do any city within an eight-hour uh, radius and uh, wow. I tell you what I was going to be excited just to see San Diego, Los Angeles you know and some of the uh, surrounding areas and cities all meet up at the fairground I was excited about it Yeah, and one of the things about it uh, uh, Pastor Key um, and I don't want to get emotional um, but you mean a lot to me um, I, I, I remember uh, when you came to San Diego and you said hey can I uh, come in the studio. I gotta, I gotta lay some tracks down for tonight, and and you came in and I told you, I I gotta get you back here at the fair, and we just did everything, and so literally this year, um, when they said they had to uh, postpone, tears came to my eyes because I said, this pastor right here, this artist right here, truly loves his fans and and his supporters, and it has meant a lot because. Let me blow let, let me blow your mind. Let me just like, literally blow your mind. Because you know, I meet millions of people. 
yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. I not only remember that day, I remember after the session, we hung out, we sat in that front office, we talked about this, and let me tell you what's amazing. I hear people say and promise everything. So when we booked that date and I found out it was you, I said this, if ever there was a man that kept his word, it was this brother right here. So no, you're not just running your mouth. Whatever happened that blessed you that day, brother, you blessed me too. Amen, amen. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's, it's amazing because I used to hear so much about you from Yolanda Adams. You guys have known each other for years. Right. And Young Artists for Christ, I joined that because you were a part of you, it. You, you gonna keep on. You already messed up because you're gonna tell your age in a minute. <laughs> I'm 51 for Jesus, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but 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 you mean a lot to me as 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 well. And um, once this corona lifts up, I'm coming to your VIP conference. I'm, I'm an independent artist, and I see how you you nurture and you speak life into. That's very very important because everybody's not with a with a major label, but they have a ministry. Let me say about that, and you got to hear me. I heard you guys talking before I came on, and you blessed me because. From before Maddie passed away, I was on the phone with her. I was at the house with, with the brick gate. Uh, James Cleveland wanted to talk to me three days before he passed just to kind of pass that mantle. I believe that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So many people didn't allow, allow it to happen. Uh, but the, Bobby Jones, I was on Bobby Jones every other Sunday. All the people you mentioned were instrumental in giving me the platform that got it oil for me. And uh, what I have never done is forgot where I came from. You guys will hear in a few days, I've got brand new remixes of I Made It Out. I've got a I Made It Out remix with my three sons, Sakardi, John John, and Tradell, and Bishop Ransom Allen. It's a major video oh, wow. with Peter Pablo, Peter Pablo. But hold on, I also have a remix where I'm getting ready to front four kings. I got JoJo from Resound. Uh, I got Lenny Smith from New York. I've got Gene Hoskins from North Carolina, and I've got Ron Point Dexter from uh, Nashville. I went out and grabbed new vocals, and they rocked this song. I put the old U51, so you really gonna love this. <laughs> I put the old Hawkins band back together. I got uh, Joel Smith is going on to be with the Lord. Right. I got Calvin Rogers to play drums. Right. I got Andrew Goucher on bass. Yes. I've got Johnny Guitar. Mm. Man, it's, it's gonna be amazing. But I did all that because we've been called the gatekeepers. Yes. So I'm calling out Kirk and I'm calling out Fred and all of those that have been given that assignment. What can we do? And I'm not just talking about fashion uh, Sunday's best, but it's got to go beyond that. Yes. We've got to watch these careers. We've got to help some of these independent artists and we've got to move over and give them the slots. Thank God for my publishing check that lets me know I'm still being played yes. like Standing in the Need just came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. But we've got to do something to help these new artists. We have a and I'm sorry for taking it. Well, we have a movement that we started called IGAM, Independent Gospel Artists Music Matters. I was walking on the beach and God gave, gave me that. And we have joined forces and we're going to put together a conference and other things to help equip and encourage independent artists because it gets hard sometimes when it doesn't happen as fast. But the good thing about it is ownership. And that's one thing I respect about you. You own your own stuff. You gotta get them. And you know what? Now I'm having problems even with that. I own my catalog. And I'll throw up a song of John P. Key on my Instagram, on my Facebook. And they're snatching it down, talking about you need to contact Sony. No, Sony needs to contact me. Right. Yeah. You got to own your message. It was a long time coming, but I say to the independent artist, maintain your independence. So you can be old like me, and if you work, you work, and if you don't, you don't. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, one of the things uh, about uh, you, I've watched you, because um, I'm, I'm a label owner, we're an independent label, and I literally um, uh, watched you develop uh, different artists and so into people uh, that people would never know that you actually were the one producing or getting behind them. And, and I literally watch you uh, so financially in the people, it's almost like um, there was one time you were here in San Diego and you blessed somebody. I, I, I don't know if it was a hundred or five hundred. It was a big amount, and it was exactly what they had prayed and asked God for. And they were just so blown away that you pulled them out of the audience, out of all the thousands of people that were there, and said, "You." 
And um, I want to ask you, what, um, how did that become a part of your ministry? Because everywhere you go, even at West Say, you know, Bishop's my cousin. And I'm like saying, at West Say, they don't need no money at West Say, but you be sitting up there and you be <laughs> blessing folks and you be blessing the person that needs it the most. Um, I was about 20 years old, Isaac and Lowell, uh, maybe a little older, maybe about 23. And I went through Atlanta, my bus broke down, and there was a bishop. And the bishop uh, literally gave me $100 and paid the $100 to get my bus fixed. And back then, $100 was $8.2 million, you know right. what I mean? So, and he told me wherever I go from that day forward to sow into every service. And I never forgot that. And then I was raised by a grandma that would feed people walking down the street that we didn't even know. Mm -hmm. So I think being raised and having that a part of my spirit, man, I sow continually. And as a pastor, I don't take a salary. And when I tell you I want for nothing and I attribute it to being able to sow into folk you don't know. When I went to West A that Sunday, I'll never forget it. Anytime I would go, your cousin, if I sang anything, he would just weep and cry. He always knew my heart and he always respected me for that. And I respected him back. And I went in, remember a young girl came down the steps mm -hmm. and just simply spoke and said, hello, how are you? And young people weren't speaking that year. It's like kids had forgot to speak. Mm -hmm. And we sold into her and sold into her and sold into her. And that's just what we've become and always have been. And to me, that's where my blessings come from. I remember something else about that day you and I sat in that office. And I'm gonna tell everybody, you know, and I hope I don't get you in trouble with the other artists or other people you work with. You were very slow to take money from me. I'll never forget that day because you wanted to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. We were in trouble. The stems had broke on tour. We had to re-record everything. And you and I saw that as you sowing into me. And the reason I bring that up is I believe that those are the miracles. Those are the, the that's the favor that God slapped on my life because of my attitude and spirit of giving. Amen. You, you have a connection to California for a lot of reasons. Because Bishop Bishop Blake is from San Diego, and you moved to San Diego, moved to California as a fourteen year old. Let's talk about your journey coming from the Carolinas to California at a young age. Wow, you you tapping into something I didn't think a lot of people knew. I was fourteen years old when I graduated from North Carolina School of the Arts. I did my first tour to California with Peter Frampton. Mm -hmm. in 79, mm -hmm. 77, 77, 77. And uh, so as a young kid, I was working at clubs like Whiskey A Go-Go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I played for Kyle Wendy, the jazz trombone player. I worked in Northern California at uh, Bill Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. I was the music director for uh, so many secular artists. As a kid, I'm 15, 16 years old playing jazz, uh, jazz gigs and um, it, it just, it, it changed my life, you know, worked with Cameo, that's yeah. how I got back to the East Coast. Cameo picked me up in Sacramento, and that's how I got back to the East Coast. So Cali has always been a part of my life. I went to Marysville School of Music, which was Yuba College in Yuba City, California. So, uh, man, my, my, my history is deep when it comes to the West Coast. Right. So I want to ask this question because, you know, um, I always say that uh, 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 Pastor Key uh, 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 represents us big guys. Now, my question is, um, has the NFL come to the table? Because I can't see the NFL having gospel anything without having John P. on. Bruh! Me and you had that conversation too. You remember we had that conversation. I don't know why. Look, I'm the football fan. I actually play ball. I don't understand. How y'all going to have that gospel celebration, sing my songs one year, and not let me be a part? I told my cousin, Dr. McCurk is my cousin. I said, look, man, I let them know I'll give them a discount. It's nowhere in the world you can have a gospel celebration and not have John B. Key be a part of it. I ran that ball and played tight end. Come on, let a brother in. We, so so <laughs> we're we going to start a movement today. With everybody everybody uh, for the gospel celebration this year, we need to start hitting them up right now and say, we want to see John P. It could, it could be done. Melanie Few is my big sister, and I, I work with her on her All gospel right. concert and she in knows San Diego. She, she knows I'm going to call, I'm gonna call her call today because I'm, I'm very close. Say, I'm begging, say this while I'm begging to get on. Hats off to her. She has maintained that 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 
gospel presence, yes. which is more important than John B. Keep right. it there. She has maintained that gospel presence every year. And this year, come on, y'all know we need to be on that rock and I made it out. We yes. Got Yes, you, yes. You, you know what I'm saying? And so we're going to start that movement. Robert's going to call her today. I'm going to talk to her today. And, and we're going to just get up there and say, look, John P. got to be on, you know. And Rob, you got to let her know, too. Hey, make her, make her laugh and tell her, I'll bring some stems that sound like the football player. Okay, I'll tell her. <laughs> I, and and, and she, she, go, she listens to me. She takes my advice. I have a question for you. Cool, cool. What definitive moment let you know that this – ministry of gospel was for you that it was your it was destined for you you're gonna love this i, I always loved music and i knew there was a seed in me i, I was phyllis hyman's music director in cali and uh, but i always you know gospel was a part of who i was and um i moved back to charlotte hit rock bottom and start selling dope out of a little green store in my neighborhood um, and let me fast forward. When God saved me, I bought that neighborhood. That's where I pastor now. And I own the property in wow. that same area, downtown Charlotte. But it was me seeing um, a buddy of mine being killed on the street for $40. Something about that just clicked, man, and reminded me. Grandma said, in trouble, call on the name of Jesus. And yeah. I promise God, if you get me back to the house, I'll get there. So playing for Daryl Coley, that was my next job. Yes, I committed myself to Daryl and was Daryl's minister of music. And uh, um, when Edwin Hawkins called my house <laughs> yes. and said, hey, I love your music. We want you to come out. We want you to write. We want you to help us do with the, with the, with the workshop. And, the, and they invested in me. And man, it just changed my heart, changed my life. And uh, I just believe that God had set something up. And if you remember the early John V. Key, you know, you look 27, but 51, you didn't tell the truth. So I'm going to tell the truth <laughs> to, to be in the industry at that season. And I was working with the likes of Thomas Whitfield, yes. Vanessa Bell Armstrong, yes. Daryl Coley, the Hawkins family. That was just, a, I was a country boy given the opportunity. I lost my godfather two weeks ago yes. to, to work with Rance Allen yes. on some of that early colorblind stuff. You know, it was, it was amazing. So I think just that whole attitude of being respected for who I was. I would show up at the studios. I produced Teddy Pendergrass's project, Truly Blessed. Got hardly no credit for it. Wow. But because I think I put me in that place I think they gave me a little small thank you at the end of the record, you know, because I didn't have a big equipment. I showed up with an MMT8, a little box about like this, and they laughed at me until they plugged it up and heard, oh, so he is a producer. Right. So, you know, it, it took some woes and some knockouts, but I always believed in my heart, and I respect that question anytime anybody asks me, because I just believed in my heart that God had a divine assignment attached to my DNA. So I want to ask this. Uh, because uh, your voice and and when you minister, mm -hmm. you sound like the uh, preachers of old. But when you get to your church, it's so hip and modern um, that you 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 get people from all walks of life. Explain that to me that you could have the veteran preaching sound, but be so relevant to today's young people. Um, that, that's that hood. I was I sold dope in that neighborhood for about four and a half years. So I got it. I, I, I get the street right now. I'm meeting with two gangs, uh, the rolling 60s and, and the straight trades that are shooting at each other and their relatives. I, I just always had a sense of being real with them. So I had problems sometimes trying to draw that line. I was past the key on the weekends on the road. And then I had to go back to being you know, the homie pastor when I got home. <laughs> right. So I, I think just trying to balance that and knowing who you are. Here's what I tell people all the time. I never wake up in the morning and have to discover John V. Key again. Right. I knew who he was when I went to sleep, and I believe that that call is on my life. And, and I sold this into the independent artist and the independent spirit. I, you know, Todd Tribbett will tell you right now, his door opened from VIP conference, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. putting him on those early New Artist Showcase mm -hmm. CDs and, and ministering to him to let him know that's what you do. Uh, 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 again, you, you, you have to almost realize that your call is bigger than an album cover. Mm -hmm. Your call is bigger 
than flossing on the West Coast. Your 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 call has to be deep seated. Uh, when you mention Yolanda Adams, that's my heart because everybody sees Yolanda the vote, but I know where Yolanda comes. From, come on, come on. You know, and to have people with that spirit mind and with that heart, man, you got to celebrate them. But don't forget to celebrate yourself and remember, remember what God initially told you to do, right. what he called you to do. When you're in the studio, you might be an independent artist, but I heard this in something you said today. This is what I heard. Pastor Key, I, I'm oiled to do what I do. I'm independent, but don't sleep on me. I still have a gift. I have something to offer too. And I think, I'm gonna go back to that word gatekeepers. That's why we gotta be responsible and understand God has commanded something over us and to us to not just be on the stage forever. You've got to create some kind of, uh, this is hot out the kitchen, right. musical session plan of those that also have the oil of God on their lives too. As you talk, my mind zooms in to Shirley Joyner because Houston, Texas is like your third or second home. Reese is my big sis too, as well as Yolanda, Angela Bennett, and all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you work for the faith. You know too much. <laughs> I'm, I, hey, I, I'm, you're one of my favorite, man. Well, we, I, I, we, I call got, him, we call him the Wikipedia of gospel. You, you, one album? I promise he's on it. Cause I, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. Because what one album that you um, did? You're, 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 touch, you're touching bases, man. That, and nobody knows that unless you know me or know the people that were there for me. Shirley Jonah, I used to go to that little music studio. All about That's music. why I wrote Psalm 1 and Romans 9 for Daryl Coley and all those songs. I wrote them right there in that little studio. Me, Yolanda, Greg Curtis used to go in there yes. and practice. And all. I mean, those people like that open the door and I'll never forget them. Reese right now can call and get twenty dollars. They were just <laughs> there for me when I when I first started out and uh uh, uh Shirley didn't get the credit she deserved. No sir. She really opened the door for a lot of gospel artists. She showed us about chic music. Yep. Uh when 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 the other writers was trying to steal my money, she went to bat for me. Matter of fact, Shirley was the one that went to James and said they're trying to rob him because he's not a part of a chapter, but you all let him do two songs. You can't just pay him for one. I mean, stuff like that. I, I, I'll just never forget. She was a heart. She was my heart. Yeah, she, she planted a seed in me as well. I was attending University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and I was such a Southeast fan that I was taken to All About Music that you're talking about, to her store, and she took time with me. And some months later, my college choir came back to tour, and she left her job and came like she said she was to support our college choir and the investment of a young man like me is now paying off with radio you had to work on a tv show and working on a solo album so people like you are so valuable and you never know when the seed will grow right right right, right. so 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 i want to i want to fast forward uh to uh, this and just, just for you to remember that I'm, uh, at the end of the day, um, I'm, oh, so much I'm, I'm touched because at the end of the day, I'm overjoyed at the thought that we can remember those things. So many people would have forgotten that, that she came or that, and, and, and you remember the name of the store, you understand me? So it had to put some kind of print in you. And I, I just believe when you remember those things and you can recall those things, I just think God honors that. I just, I just believe, I always have belief he does. I believe it does. Well, I, I want to fast forward to your virtual concert. Man. Oh, yeah. M man. I, I, I mean, that's been a lot of virtual concerts. It was but crazy. Man, your virtual concert was just so on point that, that it was like, play it again. Play it again. <laughs> it was so hood. We didn't practice. We hadn't been on the road for like four months. And Sheila Lakin said, I'll tell you what, I'll get everybody here. She said, I want y'all to go in. I want it to be raw. And when I tell you, it was raw, raw, raw. But listen, we appreciate it so much. And it's still some more of that concert. We haven't aired yet. We're waiting now on Facebook to get monetization and everything in line. But we're excited about it. But that concert was amazing. I enjoyed it. Look, and we're going back out. I just decided uh, last week we've got some new rules because of the pandemic. But we are going to do a few more concerts. I'm in Dallas, I think, New Year's at Friendship West. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so we're, we're getting ready to hype it up and go get it again. My fans, man, have just been loyal. Yes. And it's just amazing. They, I thank God for the new stuff. You know, I appreciate it for it. But they are loyal to that John P. Key sound, that John P. Key music. And I appreciate it so much. I want to tell you, when we were preparing for the fair, mm -hmm. um, we did we did like three months of everything John P. And the day of the fair, everybody was so disappointed. The fairgrounds called and said, can you all do a tribute like the concert for John P. Key where everybody could at least tune in? And so we had thousands of people tuning in like they were listening to your concert. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know, because we're a BBS reporting station, those were some good credits. <laughs> but um, it was this. I need to tell you something. Yeah. It's amazing that you tell me that because we didn't know what the hype was even that week, man. We didn't know. And we just started getting a lot of response, a lot of response uh, 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 from a lot of people, a lot of artists on the West Coast. And um, hey man, just thank you, man, for the love and whatever that means. It means we have not canceled in our minds. 2021 don't play because we owe the city of San Diego. Yeah, and, and that was the first thing that the, uh, they said. They said, Lynn, um, they agreed to come in 2021. All we got to do is get through this pandemic. So we, we leave it everything the same because, you know, that is an expectation. It's like in San Diego, you're not a visitor, you family. And so all the family is ready for our, our uncle, our big brother to come back in. And what I tell you is going to be stupid. It's going to... I mean, because not only does the stadium host 10,000, but in front of the stage, in front of the stage, you can get about 2,000 people on mm -hmm. the ground. And what I tell you, they packed that joker out, and um, it, it's, it's ridiculous. The only thing we have to tell folks, don't, don't uh, yeah. jump off the Damn stage. <laughs> it's too high up. <laughs> yeah, because the, sta the, sta the stage is like 12 I, I, feet up. <laughs> Yeah. I just, I want to thank y'all that y'all didn't forget, man, and just the heart of the people, the heart of you two, man, just to 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 have a mind, and it's bigger than just singing, man, yes. it's bringing what you have to San Diego to bless the people, yes. and uh, let me just let you know, Uncle John, been getting a little rest, I ain't gonna let you down. But. Right. I, I, I want to touch a little something on commitment, because these young artists and viewers that are listening and watching, you need to know about commitment. You were only with like two labels, Ty Scott and Verity, and now you you have your own company through Verity. But yeah. let's talk about people having stability because we two popcorn these days. Popcorn is the right word, and that's the same word I would have used. Um, I think what's going on now is uh, I did do Verity. I carried I carried Ty Scott to Verity with me, and it's the bumps of the road. And since we've been a hundred, I'm gonna be a hundred with you all. You know, you got to watch that paperwork. You know, it mm -hmm. got a little crazy near the end. I was there 17 years. Yes. And uh, right now, I've, I've got a distributor, and, and they do such a good job with uh, E1. They do a really good job with, with, with my music. But you have to 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 understand, before being committed to any company, and, and I heard this with IGAM. I'm paying attention to you. I heard what you said. Um, um, you've got to be committed to what God's laid on your heart mm -hmm. you know and and when i i come from the drug game so i know something about commitment and loyalty you can't really talk about that in the church but that book is coming as well mm -hmm. but what what we don't see and the reason i embrace popcorn is people will jump at the at the sound of a dime come you can on have your unit together come on and if they see something a little sweeter uh county over mm -hmm. they'll drop dime and flip on you like you never matter yes and uh and that's why I, I really, really would love when you say you want to start this workshop and get some things going, please include Uncle John. I won't let you down um, because that has to be, we have to speak to that. Before God can bless you, you've got to be committed. Before God can bless you, you've got to be loyal. He, he caught, so, caught them fishing one day and they were doing it wrong. He said, you got to catch your net on the other side. Yeah. And that's the thing. People will be loyal until they get instruction. Mm -hmm. And when they get instruction, they get attitude because they don't want to they don't want to fall in line with, with, with the script, mm -hmm. as we used to say in the street. But in order for it to work, you've got to fall in line. Yeah. So um, 
and hang around loyal people. Those disloyal people that are not committed, yes, do not have an issue with them go. Get them away from you. That's right. Because they hold up progress and they stifle the oil. They 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 are not supposed to be a part of the program. Wow. So I know that you have a very very busy schedule today. So my final question is, yeah. what's up next for Uncle John? When I tell y'all, and we family, I'm, I'm treating this like family. This ain't no proper interview. I'm just telling you like it is. I'm working on 12 projects at the same time. <laughs> and uh, Sheila got to be the other day. It's like, Pastor Keith, you got to end something. I'm doing a project. Before Whitney Houston died, we were working on a project called uh, 10 Women, 10 Victories. And I, 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 I promised God I was going to finish that project. Uh, I was working with her. I was working with Aretha Franklin. I just finished the Aretha Franklin song yesterday. Wow. Grant Allen solo. We did a lot of work together before he passed. John P. Key Worship Project, my church choir. Uh, I redid, uh, Cardi and I, I watched the George Floyd funeral. And during the recession, they sang Thomas Whitfield's I Shall Wear a Crown. Yes, sir. And it messed me up. Me they too. Meaning to the whole song. So Cardi... A young lady named Mignon out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I recut that song, and it's the, I bought the entire choir back on that one, so it, it's gonna be good. Uh, uh, I'm working on John P. Key, the tribute project. Everybody's on it, uh, doing John P. Key music. Wow. Little Rufus has a project going on, so I got quite a bit going on. But what I'm loving right now, guys, is the movie, the movie. about my father, the, the movie. lost song. Yeah. Uh, 1947. My daddy was given a record contract. And on the way to New York City, the Ku Klux Klan shot their bus, turned it around. And so I tell that whole story about he remained committed in 1975. He puts the choir back together. So everybody's in the movie. Uh, I'm excited. We're five scenes from being done. Wow. If it hadn't been for Corona, we would have been done. We would probably been releasing it uh, this quarter. So I'm excited about that movie because along with my dad's story, I chronicle it with a tour with James Cleveland, Mahalia Jackson, Dixie Hummingbirds, and the Caravans. So you guys get ready. Uh, I'm excited about it. We shot everywhere from Carolina to San Jose, and uh, I'm super, super excited about that movie. Well, well you, t you tell management that we on the West Coast are going to be your station for promotion, for debuts. Whatever you need, Uncle John, we are here for you. We'll do movie premieres, uh, whatever it takes, because you have been faithful to the relationship in our city ever since you stopped here. And we're going to be faithful to you. Uh, this is not about money. No. It's not about prestige. It's about we love, love you. Love, love. And we appreciate you. And um, it's so funny because you meet a lot of artists. And I've booked almost every major artist in the country. And people say, oh, call me up and, and, and do this and do that. But you literally say, here is my personal number. Call me anytime. And out of respect yeah. for uh, protocol, I always call management. And then she connects me with you because I always want her to know that um, I respect protocol. I was brought up in protocol. And yeah. only when, when you said you can call me directly, then I call you directly. And that means a lot because well, you don't I want have you to know both. Right. I want you to know both of you and make sure we work it out. I'm going to call Sheila today and make sure you have direct contact with me. And I'll tell you why. Leading up to our return, I don't care if it's promo. I want you to have it first. On this week, I'm going to make sure you have all four of those mixes. I'm gonna put, and I'm not just going to put you in touch, touch with my people. I'm going to make sure you got, you can call me, two, you call Uncle John 24, just watch that people. You call me 24 hours a day. Either I woke or I'm not. You understand me? Nine times out of ten, I'm up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I want you to reach out to me because, again, I never will forget what you did for me, allowing me to come in there and just be at home, man. We brought our own people. You let me bring the singers in. And just that whole attitude, that's real. And talking about loyalty, that's when you really, really, those people that forget where they come from, and I call it doing the Hollywood talk. We ain't got time for that. We got to get some business done. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate y'all so much. In, in, in closing, you have done 22 choir projects and seven solo projects. That is a Hall of Fame. But you've been put in the Hall of Fame in 2007, inducted into the Christian Music Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So you are the Prince right. of Gospel. I have one request from you, though. Please, yeah. please redo another 
there is hope because you had my Reese on there, my Yolandra, you my Lashandra Langford. You got the Holy Ghost. Do a you modern got the Holy Ghost. We just did the track a month ago. We're getting ready to start working on it like ASAP. You got the ghost, buddy. Do a modern one, yes. <laughs> you send me something. Look, I need to give you a spot on there just for bringing it up. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> I ain't man. You'll see. You'll see. I'm going to give you a line just for bringing it up. Oh we are definitely God. doing it. One of the worst things I did in my career, I got angry one night when I started seeing them put out the James Cleveland records after he passed. Right. And um, even with the uh, Aretha Franklin movie, yep. I know the truth behind that movie. I know why that movie never came out right. while she was alive because they didn't fix it. If you watch that movie, mm -hmm. she was ups upset during the whole movie. She mm -hmm. never smiled because the budget, everything changed at the last minute. And so I'm having a moment and I go to the studio and I take some scissors and I cut up every master I had. <gasps> they can't find them. I chopped them up and watch this. The crazy thing about that is now I want those masters. I wish I had them to just reproduce the music. So that being said, There Is Hope featured Daryl Coley, Marvin Winans, Fred. Uh, Commission, mm -hmm. Duty, everybody was on there. Uh, Reese was on there. Yes. You know, um, uh, so um, I want to go back because those songs speak like colorblind. Yes. I redid it with PJ Borden because those songs speak volumes, yes. man. To where we are right now in the world. So yes. You bringing that up was major. We did the track. I did the track in. Um, I did the track in Northern California, in San Jose, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago with um, Dave Jackson. So oh, I'm excited Jesus. about that. Dave so, Jackson. Yeah. Woo. So, so let me let me say this. I'm gonna play this next song as as we close out this uh, interview and let you go. But I want to know how did you feel when um, Roland Martin. Uh, play your song, show up and start doing the alpha <laughs> dance. How did you feel about it? Because that's what I'm going to play next. Hey, let me say this. Let me say this. First of all, Roland is like my, my, my super nephew. Right. Roland is crazy. Let everybody know. I said it, put it out there. Roland is a nut, but here's why I give him credit. Roland is a scholar. Roland is true to the game. And I love him with my heart. When I saw that, I want everybody to know I laughed for hours. Because that's just Roland Martin. He's true to it. And I just respect him highly. Well, y'all, we have we, we been gotta let him sitting, go. sitting at the oh, the, 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 knee, the 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 Jesus. Uh, 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 Uncle John, mm -mm -mm. John P. Key. Uh, Jesus. We, 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 we love him. And we're going to play this song. Man. Show up. Right here in honor of all Man. of it. And we're going to keep in touch. I ain't going to be able to sleep tonight. Because well, well, I'm, I'm calling Reese. <laughs> I'm calling Yolandra. Hey, listen, some kind of way. Let's, let's definitely contact in the next hour, 30 minutes. I'm going to call Sheila. Make sure y'all got access to me. Hit me because we're going to make it happen. I'm putting your vocal on that. Look, I've said it in front of the millions of people. Hey, nephew got to sing with Uncle John. You understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, y'all. This is none other than John P. Key himself, the legend, right here on GOD Radio 1. The song is called Show Up. Right yes, here. Lord. Jesus.